Hey, thanks for checking out this video. We're going to take a behind the scenes look at how two of my clients are absolutely winning with Facebook ads. One client uh, has an objective of generating leads and we're doing that under a dollar, which is kind of like the holy grail of Facebook for quality leads. And another client's objective is to generate sales and we sell a single product and we have generated over $35,000 of sales exclusively through Facebook so those are definitely pretty two successful campaigns that you're going to learn a lot from and hopefully you'll be able to find some strategies to implement for your business to replicate that so first I just want to touch a little bit about my experience I've been a Facebook ads consultant for about 19 months uh, and currently right now I am managing north of $75,000 of Facebook ad spend for my clients and that's in different industries and niches. I operate exclusively in Facebook ads so that's really all that I focus on uh, and all my expertise lies there so this exposure to this data is really uh, a big benefit to having an understanding of what works and what doesn't and just that experience in general is pretty key to winning Facebook ads. In addition, I also consult for an agency Dominate Web Media, which is a pretty big player in the Facebook ads agency world. Um, education there as well as done for you services that they provide to some high high ticket clients in. Right now, the screenshot's a little bit older, but right now we are coaching or overseeing just north of $1 million in ad spend a month that we kind of have our hands on in some shape or form. So, again, when you couple that with my own ad spend and then kind of just the exposure that I have here, that is really invaluable information. Just that many impressions, that amount of data allows you to really get a, a better understanding and put you in position to play the Facebook ads game to win. Also in that group, uh, if you're looking for additional education, there's a great uh, Facebook ads group called Facebook Ads University. I'm a moderator in there, so just a lot, a lot of good expertise and information in that group from experienced Facebook advertiser and those that are looking just to start out. So I'm heavily involved with that as well. Hi, the first campaign that we'll take a behind the scenes look at is for Dominic Brown. Dom is a client that I have been working with for the last past three months. He is a financial planner. So the goal and objective of his campaigns is to generate leads for his business um, in that space. So he helps people with improving the credit score, creating financial plans and things such as that. So he came to me about three months ago looking to generate leads. So that was the, the plan. So now let's take a quick look at what we've done. So let's, to just get a picture, we'll take a look at what he was doing prior to bringing me on board. And he really didn't do much. Dom's a smart guy, so he realized early on that it was better to bring an expert in instead of him kind of um, spending the time and energy doing it himself. But he did try a campaign around the same objective that we tried promoting his 101 credit book. Um, and as you can see, like I said, he... he didn't take too long to figure it out, even though this one he spent two hundred ninety-six dollars. But you can see he was getting a dollar thirty-two cents per click on this campaign, three dollars and seventy-five cents per click on that one. And that's just per click. That's not even per lead. He didn't even have his pixels set up or anything like that to be able to really track how his campaigns were were doing. But at any rate, those clicks are definitely high, and he wasn't going to have success going that rate. So it was a good thing that. He brought someone in. Uh, we could take a, a look, just very basic structure at the ad set level. Um, looks like he's just testing one thing. So yeah, this is pretty pretty bad. It's just 24 to 55 in all the people in the United States. So 122 million. So this was definitely definitely too broad and those results kind of indicated that um, relevant score of three and two looks like he was split testing multiple things so that's a good sign but again 
If you're targeting off in that broad, you're not going to have much success. So that is how it looked before, and he was on a path to um, on a path to disaster. Really, he was going to waste a lot of money going this route. But like I said, he's a very sharp guy, and he got help. So let's take a look at um, how it his campaign went after he got me on board. And now I need to preface this with the fact that we're actually not even generating leads for Don right now just because he had so many. We had to turn it off. And <laughs> as a consultant, Facebook ads consultant, anyone at, when someone asks you that, to turn off the campaign because you're getting too many leads, that is a, a good thing. It's a good problem for him to have and that's exactly what we did. Uh, so let me uh, do a search on the campaigns that we are running for him. So these are the two major ones that I set up for him. And as you can see, let's go ahead and get this to something more relevant. So on one, we spent 953. On one, we spent 905. So about $1,850 and 1,137 leads. And yes, these are, well, leads is 1,119. And these are all real legitimate leads. Like if you see that, you say lead, it's on the Facebook pixel. So these are email addresses. These are people that opted in for the ebook and I have attention for booking the free consultation. And he says that he gets about uh, 30 to 40% of people that download the ebook um, are eligible for the free consultation. He likes to weed them out to make sure that sure that only the qualified people are speaking to him. So those are huge numbers, uh, just outstanding. Uh, cost per lead, on the one that worked the best and what we ran with, $1.22 per lead. And that's per email address. Um, that a lot of people are booking free consults. That's just transformed his business. That's you know outstanding. Even the one that didn't do as well, two dollars and fifty-two cents. Um, even my other clients, if they had results at that level, you know they would take that all day. So both of these just did it, um, flat out outstanding. And they're just two different things because I wanted to try two different angles. So the free consults campaign. Is a longer video. It's actually like a 14 minute video of him speaking. We're leading with a video ad uh, that's a little bit longer in nature. And for the free consults explainer video, that's an actually like a like a whiteboard kind of animated 60 second clip that is kind of catchy. And you know, we just tried two different things. We wanted to try one of him speaking for a long time, and then one a bit shorter to see what wins. And that was our winner and the structure of the ad sets are pretty the same pretty much the same but we can go ahead and take a look so if you recall what his uh, ad sets look like you see a big difference here and this is kind of what you get when you deal with someone who has so much experience with Facebook ads it can pick up on these type of things you notice here just a clean setup so we have a bunch of different ad sets, but all of them are named. So um, even if you don't really know what's going on, he can come in here and get a quick feel of how each of these are doing. Um, and that's very important. You don't want to overcomplicate this thing or make things tough for other people to be able to make out. So just clear naming conventions is important. Um, so initially, it was about researching and get an interest that we could target that met his demographics. So you see a whole bunch of cold interests here that we tried and I like to separate these out so we can see what is working and what's not because if you just lump all these together, like if we lump mint.com, debt consolidation and credit score together, um, there would be no way that we can know that mint.com was converting at $1.83 and credit score at $3.65 so that's important that's about 50% less per lead than that one so that is critical information when you're trying to scale out and run a profitable Facebook campaign so that's why I set them up like that and
optimizing for the lead instead of just website clicks you always want to optimize for conversions you don't want to overthink things if you want leads tell Facebook you want leads um, another trick here that amateurs won't know is that we want to exclude the leads if people already opted in we want to make sure that they're not seeing the ad again it's small things like that that you get when you pay for a professional Facebook ads consultant instead of trying to do things yourself um, and it's just because of the amount of campaigns and experience that I have uh, so yeah this is the age range and see right on this one we just have mint.com that's four hundred and seventy thousand dollars so that was four hundred and seventy thousand people so that was good enough to go with on some of these like debt consolidation You see, this has um, more than just debt consolidation and the interest, but they are highly related. Um, so you can do that too, and you just kind of know that by experience which ones you can lump together. So this turned out an audience of 680,000 people, which is cool. So those are closely related, so I'm okay with putting those together. So yeah, the ad set level, that is kind of how it's structured. And you'll notice as time went on and we started getting data on our pixel, lookalike audiences. Look at some of these costs per leads on the lookalike audiences. Dollar and nine cents, dollar and four cents, dollar and two cents, dollar and five cents. Those are just outstanding. That's based upon lookalike audiences. So when we started this campaign, I set up the custom audiences so we would be able to take advantage of those. So, and we have them at a whole bunch of different levels. The viewers are people that viewed the landing page. Uh, I had him upload his email list. So we created a lookalike audience based upon that. Lookalike audience based upon the actual leads. Uh, lookalike audience based upon the email list. This one right here, this one is layered. So this has yeah, so layering, this is an advanced technique. So I'm still using the lookalike email list, but in order to get this down and make it a little bit more relevant, I layered it with interest of things that are most likely to resonate with this audience. So those are the things that I try. And at a dollar and four cents per conversion, I think that it worked pretty well. So yeah, that is at the ad set level. A lot of stuff going on here. Um, just adjusting the budget, make sure that you're monitoring the data um, for different demographics, figuring out if males are converting more cheaply than females, what age range is, what time of day, a whole bunch of stuff goes into that. So I'm always switching around and um, trying to optimize things at the ad set level. So now let's jump into some of the ads. And to be honest, the ad level is um, pr pretty simplistic here. When we take a look at another campaign, um, you'll see more split testing at the ad level. I'd like to split test at the ad level, but we've had so much success kind of here that um, it wasn't needed as much. And we would have got to that, but we just had a, a flood of, of leads in. So um, we put things on pause. So I really didn't mean you know get the opportunity yet but once he um, gets through all that and sorts it out you know I definitely will be testing um, different things and I guess the reason why there's also not multiple ads at one time is just because I created a different campaign like at the beginning I told you we were kind of um, split testing how the longer video matched up against the explainer video so I could have just made one campaign and split test those at the ad level but I just made two campaigns um, for those. So I'm just kind of really split testing two things at the campaign level instead of at the ad level. And to be honest, I'm not even sure why I did that. That's just how I went about it. Um, there's really no right or wrong answer there. It's just how you want to set things up. And let's see. So yeah, uh, if you recall his ad, he wasn't taking advantage of all of the real estate that Facebook has to offer for sure. Uh, so let's take a look. I have a copy of the actual ad up. 
and this is ad copy that I created so this is pretty simplistic ad copy but it worked for sure uh, I would have liked to try different approaches to you know see what works better but when you're getting leads for like a dollar it's you know tough to really improve a lot lot more but you know I would definitely try but just leading out with a question that grabs people's attention um, just keeping the copy relevant it grabs people's attention it's not overly complicated not really using big words or anything like that but if this is something that's relevant to you um, this is gonna get you to you know click and to the next page and that's exactly what it was doing a strong headline 101 powerful credit improvement tips and the link description is just a bit about him and this is the landing page that they went to so we led with the explainer video, short explainer video. This hey, video. Hey, if you need to improve your. Uh, so this is a three minute and seven video where he kind of just lets them know more about his services and why they should opt in. Very simple opt in form, name, cell phone number, and email, all that stuff required. So they're opting in for a free copy of the book and a free phone consultation. So that's why it's such a big percentage of those people are actually doing the phone consultation because they want it so really it's just up to Don to weed out the people that he wants to spend his time talking to so yeah definitely um, definitely a winner I guess the last thing that I could touch on look at these look at this social proof look at these stats 302 reactions 10 comments 212 shares anytime you get that many shares especially in relation to that many comments you know that you have a winning ad and Facebook is going to reward you so that's outstanding but here take a look at this ninja trick that you're only going to get when you work with people who really know Facebook as inside and out so on most people campaigns at the ad set level these will have different ad different ad ID so there's like 302 comments I forget the exact numbers but pay attention here So this is another ad set, but look, those stats are the same. This is not by default. This is not how it works. Typically, these stats would be uh, individually tallied. So you know, if this one had 100 and this one had 100, those would be separate. But there's a way to hack the system. Ethical hack. It's just, it's just good marketing that allows you to make sure that all this stuff is cumulative. So all these different ads, it's rolling up to the same ad. So that's uh, more social proof. So when people are seeing this and you know these type of stats, they're more likely to opt in. Facebook is um, gonna give you a cheaper CPM. So it's just money. Uh, that's the type of stuff that you know, if Dom was doing it himself, he's just not gonna know just because he doesn't have that experience. He's not managing over $75,000 a month in ad spend. He's not um, working with an agency that does close to a million a month and has high, prof high profile coaching clients. So those are just some of the advantages that he gets just for kind of uh, putting this in the hands of someone who does this for a living. Uh, so yeah, that is a very brief behind the scenes look at a real life campaign that I managed now that it has just uh, been a grand slam he's like I said we had to actually just turn it off he said Terry I can't handle any more leads right now and you know that's it that's a good thing that's what I want to happen for all my clients and we kind of take this approach and set your things up the right way that is what can happen you definitely could see the difference you know before and after so of course he feels that his money is well spent and he's gonna value and in, in return on investment so that is what it's all about. So um, thanks, we will jump into the next case study where I show you a client that I have that is actually generating sales as opposed to generating leads. Hi, the next case study we're gonna take a look at behind the scenes is a client that I have uh, called Share the Love Today. Uh, in this, like I said, we are focusing on sales on this campaign. A lot of times people believe that you can't sell products through Facebook and that is 
not true if you have the right product and you are able to get the right message in front of the right person so it's kind of the, the same thing and this is a good example of that um, this is a bit different just because there's a great mission behind this product there's cause for it when people purchase these flip-flops um, a large portion of the proceeds goes back to feeding hungry children so people connect with that and they want to help out so that's definitely a reason why this is campaign is doing as well as it is um, so yeah that's something you want to keep in mind the easier it is to get people to take action the more success you're gonna have with your Facebook ads so this is pretty simple here and we sell three products it's flip-flops in pink blue and black and that's really all that it is to it price point twenty nine dollars and ninety nine cents so you can go to Old Navy and get a pair of flip-flops for a dollar so we're definitely not competing for the lowest price here because these are pretty expensive flip-flops but again they are high quality and they serve a purpose you are helping to feed hungry children and we like to drive that point across so let's jump into it I'm a bit of history on this Cass is my client for this and and that he's another extremely bright client that I have. Um, very smart guy. They ran they ran Facebook ads for this product. Uh, again, like Dom, very briefly they spent some time, money, realized they weren't getting the results that they think they could. So they went and looked for an expert, someone who does this full time, and that's how they came across me. And you know, this has just been a blessing to be involved with. Uh, a company that is doing you know so much good and helping people out um, that's why I've got in to the world of Facebook ads so anytime you come across clients like this and you can hit a home run you know that's really just special so okay let's get into the numbers uh, so uh, again this is about split testing multiple things I'm doing it at the campaign level as well as some at the ad level but uh, the two big ones here are video campaigns. So we have a great video, just an outstanding video that we're using to run ads around. I always believe where possible that um, you want to try video ads. We also have the carousel ads. When you're selling products on Facebook, carousel ads. Uh, most times they're not fare better than just run a, a single picture of the product. So in carousel ad, we're featuring all three of the flip flops. And then we have our retargeting ads. Anytime you're selling products on Facebook, retargeting is going to be critical because people are going to click through, they're going to like something, but they're not going to buy it. So you need, that's your job to get in front of them again to get them to buy it. And we do that pretty creatively with um, Share to Love. Uh, the great thing about this client is he gives me control, he, you know, he lets me try ideas because it's all about creating profit. So for our retargeting, we actually you target the people who view but didn't buy and we give them a discount if they take quick action and it has been working so you can kind of see the, the numbers here uh, this is for the last month the video campaign $7,445 in ad spend $25,966 in sales uh, just a bit under 26 so that is what a little bit under four to one. Carol still adds twenty seven hundred in ad spend and six thousand one hundred and eighty nine in ad spend. So again, that is almost almost three to one. I mean, not quite. Mm -hmm. And the retargeting ads that I told you about sixteen hundred and sixty five in ad spend. And eight thousand one hundred eighty-six in sales, so that is uh, maybe six to one, maybe no calculator on me. But at any rate, it's it's good for eleven thousand eight hundred eighteen dollars in ad spend. Facebook is reporting forty thousand three hundred forty-two dollars in sales. Now that number is um. A little bit off because it's the tracking can get messed up in Facebook especially when you're dealing with 
number is that big, but we are at $35,000. So that is still, you know, we'll take that for sure. So let's jump into some of the ad sets. And the ad sets for the video and the carousel are gonna be set up exactly the same. I mean, the only thing that's gonna change is how you optimize them. So we can just take a look at the video because this is where a big portion of our money is being spent because we felt that it's been getting us the best bang for our buck. But even though it's getting the best bang for our buck, I did not turn off the carousel ads. Um, you see they were still getting almost three to one. So if something's working, you don't want to turn it off. The goal is to really just tweak it to see how we can improve that. Um, a lot of people would have just thrown all the money into the video campaign and completely neglected the carousel ad but if it's working uh, I don't like to do that so the ad sets we have a lot of different ad sets here we've tested a bunch of stuff um, thing about this client is he had a strong asset base that we thought was going to be um, beneficial like fan pages and big email lists and things like that so we targeted them but they really didn't pan out as strongly as we would thought at first but our cold audiences at the beginning uh, worked for us and again clearly named ad sets you can kind of see what's going on here even if you're a stranger just popping in I said like cold charity based companies so if you take a look at this See what we have going on here so these are other companies that kind of follow the same model of giving a percent of proceeds of charity uh, so this one flip-flop intersect with individual charities this is going to be a layering technique here So flip-flop sandals and tongs, huge audiences, 16 million sandals, 69, just, just huge. I don't want to target these alone. So I want to, you know, make it more relevant. So I put, it must also match these charities. So that takes those numbers down and that allows us to get a bit more, you know, laser focus there. Um, so yeah, we tested all, all of these things out and you see the ones that are still standing and those ones like we still have some cold audiences here that are still on that have made us money this cold flip-flop charity $771 in ad spend and it's made $2,400 over the last month um, we have another one that's actually a duplicate you see I have some duplicates here and that's something that I've been experimenting like I said when you deal with a lot of money and you see a lot of stuff going on for a lot of campaigns, you kind of pick up on things to try. So the duplication is instead of, since these are ad sets are profitable, instead of jacking them up to like $100 per day, let's try two at 50 um, to see how Facebook treats that. And you know, for this campaign, it is going quite well. Why these duplicates are extremely profitable. 494 in ad spend. 1800 and sell so we'll take that all day again just like with Dom you see that these ones are on and it have um, high amounts look-alike audiences look-alike audiences are critical so that is why um, if you break even like with cast with this campaign we broke even like the first three weeks of the campaign and then the fourth week we just skyrocketed and a big reason for that, it's looking like audiences. You need time to accumulate data so Facebook can start serving your ads more intelligently and you can capitalize and build lookalike audiences. We couldn't run lookalike audiences when we first turned these on. That's why you have to be patient and this is the Facebook ad game can be, um, it's not a sprint. So some clients, if you're not turning crazy RI the first week, if <laughs> had some the first day, then you know they're wondering why I'm saying Facebook ads can't work. Um, it's a long term thing, you're building up assets and data on those pixels or assets because look at all the money that they are making us, it's ridiculous. 
Uh, so different ad sets, I set up custom audiences on e-commerce, you definitely wanna set up a multitude of different custom audiences and utilize that for your advantage. So this is a lookalike audience based on people who add it to the cart but didn't buy. And you see the ROI on that baby. 18, $800 ad spend and $3,300 in sale. Look alike on the viewers. Look alike on the people that actually purchased. And this is why you have to test. Um, most people would assume that the look alike on people that actually made a purchase is going to be the strongest. So you see this is 700 in ad spend and 20 300 in sales so why that's still very very strong and we'll take that all day it's not it's actually not as strong as the look like based upon people who added to the cart but didn't buy and there's you know reasons behind that and you start to learn that stuff but the key is you want to test those things out uh, sales viewer that's people who view the sales page um, yeah so there's a lot of stuff going on there uh, desktop only these are things you can uh, try to test as well this is a recent test of seeing how splitting it out so testing the desktop we were getting conversion cheaper cheaper on mobile when all placements were tested so I tried to split the desktop out to see how that fared because sometimes you think um, you know this is definitely gonna work but sometimes you know Facebook would trick you it's better to keep them all lumped together. The placements, uh, you actually still get better results that way. Uh, so those are things you gotta test and make sure you have a system for keeping an eye out on. So yeah, the scalability here is crazy. These lookalike audiences are huge. Like if you look at these, 1.2 million. So these are all huge audiences. Um, <laughs> you know, we can run these ads all day. We can up the budget, we can duplicate, and we are consistently getting ROI. And it's because of the way this is structured, bottom line. Um, let's take a look at the ad level. So again, this is the video. Great video here, like I said, this is outstanding. This has been a great asset and one of the reasons why we had the success that we've had. We are a sun chasing, beach loving, flip flop wearing family. And we won't watch it all, but the way that we put that together, I think it uh, really gets people with attention. Uh, Add copy. Again, strong opening line, simple to the point. We definitely want to. Let people know that it helps feed hungry children and we give them a call to action. We don't assume that they know to click. I tell them to click click there. You see the social proof here. 311 comments, 2008 shares. That's almost seven to one shares of comments. So again, those are things to look at. When you have that type of ratio, then you are doing something right. So we're definitely doing something right here. And again, Remember those numbers? Over 2,000 shares, 311 comments. Just like on the last campaign, the way this is set up. Go down here. Computer is gonna slow on me. know why it's not showing me the numbers but just yeah briefly concept here same comments same shares so even though the we different ad sets so I tied all of them together and that's something that you have to manually do yourself via a hack most people aren't gonna know that so if you have all these ad sets and each of them has a uh, a separate ad ID all those comments likes and shares are going to be spread out so instead of having 100 shares on one ad you're gonna have 
10 shares on 10 ads. Which one do you want? You want 100 on one because there's more social proof. So you're gonna get cheaper cost per clicks. 14, 19, 23. You're gonna um, get lower CPMs and you're just gonna have a better campaign. So you wanna make sure that you do that. Uh, carousel ad is set up the same way. Just optimize it different at the ad set level based upon results. And retargeting is we actually offer people a ten dollar deal if they come back for the, the retargeting. So this one is just based upon an actual image that we've had created. But let's take a quick look at this because this is important. And then we'll wrap it up. Retargeting. So these are people that have visited our site so they know us. So I lead out with something that acknowledges that. Thanks for visiting www.sharelovetoday.com. We are 100% committed to two things. So we're letting them know that we know that they visited us and we appreciated it. So, um, sorry. So, yeah, two things there. Easy to read copy. We let them know that we're having a sale for $19.99. So the image features the products and lets them know that there's a sale. Strong headline come back today and save $10 off your order. And that's it. Shop now, call to action button. And like you've seen, that is getting us seven to one on our money. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. And yeah, so uh, yeah, extremely well. Like I said, the numbers on Facebook are just a bit off, but you know, just to verify what I said, sales in the last 30 days, 35,443. And we are only running Facebook ads. It's the only paid traffic that we utilize. So that money is coming via this campaign. Uh, so yeah, right there is a deep dive behind the scenes, exclusive look at how you can generate sales from Facebook ads, especially when you have a high quality product that you can find pe that people are passionate about. Um, people love the flip flops. Reviews have been great, but people also love the fact that you know, their purchase is going for a cause and we make sure that we utilize that. So it's a really a win-win for everybody. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that you learned a lot for both of these case studies. The next move for you to make is if you are interested, go ahead and uh, fill out my questionnaire and let's see if I can help you out if you're interested in learning more and discussing how I can utilize these tactics to help your business. Thanks.